Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India As we have continued our uh, discussion on the Indus Valley terracotta figurines, so if in the first uh, instance we have found some of the figurines, those are uh, the representation of the female bodies as well as the animal bodies, we also have some of the other uh, evidences, for example, the representation of the male bodies. In the male bodies, as you can see on screen, that there are fairly simplistic depiction of these male bodies. For example, the ones we have on screen, they are uh, the standing male bodies with like the facial features that we also see in the female bodies. For example, the eyes are added, then like those thick strips of lips and then there is also a suggestion of the breast and also the male genitalia and that suggests that I mean this is a male body that is uh, different from the ones we have discussed before. In the male bodies though, we do not find usually the use of those elaborate headdresses that is there in the female body bodies and in this case we usually find unadorned bodies. Now we do not know the use of them, they can also be part of the votive offerings. However, in, in some cases we find use of very simple uh, ornaments for example, this necklace that we have in here. In some cases also we find that there are seated male bodies, for example, the one we see in the left corner of this image and which are also fairly simply made, this, this images are. Now another important part of that the discussion can be that these images, those are created from clay and then they are baked, they are baked in the kin for making these terracotta figures. They are created at a time when the molds were also available. So, they had molds available for making images which might have been also much more precise, but still they managed or they still they uh, decided to make these images with hand modeling and there can be some of the ritualistic reasons for that, that we know that how there are certain kind of rituals which are related to making things with hand instead of just making things with a mold. And when I talk about mold, we can, we can also think about some of the contemporary images of the, uh, the gods and goddesses in the Hindu context, in the Buddhist context and so on, where we find that one mold is used for making multiple copies of the same god or goddesses or one mold is used for making multiple copies of the votive figures. So, that kind of technology was also available to these people because there are some of the molds of the seals as well as the mold for making other figurines are found from these sites, but still the people in Harappa and uh, the other sites in the Indus Valley, they decided or they made a um, conscious choice to make these things with this with their hands. And that is something that intrigues us to think that what might have been the reason. There have been some of the assumptions that how these rituals that they might have performed, they have something to do th with the life and betterment of our lives, prosperity and so on. And that is the reason they had this intrinsic relationship to what we do with our body, what we also, how we are also connected to the land. And terracotta being something that comes from the clay, which is also a representation of the land, that is that became a very significant material for them to work with. So terracotta is also not expensive if we think about it economic value at a place where a clay and soil is found in abundance. But for its relationship to the earth, which is also worshipped as mother earth, so that is the reason that the clay made objects as terracotta and terra cruda objects, those, those ones will be of high significance to these people. 
So for example, we also see that how there are uh, different kind of uh, molds as I have already said that there are mold like things and there are this molds they also have a narrative tendency if we go with the iconographic content of them. So for example, in this particular uh, uh, object that we have it was perhaps used as a seal or it can also be used for making an impression on a soft material. So this this is uh, an object which is made of clay and then it is baked. So that is the reason this is a solid uh, much more durable object than something that is made from mud and then when it is pressed onto the mud or some kind of other soft material then the impression of this image will be uh, collected on the other soft material right. So that is how the use of this kind of objects were there. And in this image what we find there is a depiction of a wheel in the top of the side of this object and in the center we find there is a uh, figure and it is perhaps it is a woman figure uh, considering that I mean there is a suggestion of uh, conical breast there and uh, it is not clear that I mean how the women's head uh, is, is made here because there are spike like things as we can see in the head but it can also be a headdress that we have already seen in the terracotta figurine that was uh, you know that was discussed earlier. Now we also find that I mean this this woman is uh, who's who's represented here. She is considered a valiant one because she is strangling two wild beasts with her bare hands, and something that that can also attest that I mean she is perhaps uh, been considered to be um, you know a supernatural being, or it can also be related to their belief system. But we do not have any material evidence to suggest whether this kind of beliefs or this images whether they have anything to do with the established religions in India today for example Hinduism or Jainism. At the lower part of this image we also see there is a depiction of an elephant and if we also consider that I mean how the elephant is created it, it also follows some of those basic principles we have seen in the other uh, animal figurines in which there is a degree of simplicity however at the same time the basic forms and the integral part of the bodies of these animals have been maintained very carefully that is how we can also distinguish that this is an elephant figure which is different from the figure of the horse that we have seen earlier. So all those minute characters they have been incorporated in these figures however with a degree of simplicity and that is the uh, that is one of the characteristic features we find in this terracotta um, you know objects. So ter in the terracotta figurines as well as um, you know the terracotta tablet or the seals the, the kind of ones that we see on screen. Now talking about the terracotta figurines and especially the votive figurines we find there is also a peculiarity in terms of uh, how they are made. So as we have already discussed that there might have been some kind of rituals which are related to making these figurines we find that these figurines where they also had a peculiarity in their, in their making that two vertical strips of clay those were uh, you know put together for making one human body and that is how all these figures are created. So in some of the figures that when this vertical two strips were put together for making a human body and then on the top of that the other body parts were added and when it was put in the kin for baking then there were the marks of this uh, you know the in some cases we find that the uh, the figures also had broken down or there was a crack by by the lines through which they were joined so that is how we get to know that these figures were not really added as like head after the body after the legs but they were actually been made from two vertical strips and they were joined together for making these figures and that is also something we find from archaeologist and scholar uh, Sherry Clark's work on the Harappan sites and the material culture so this is also something that 
tells us that I mean they had this very specific approach to the body and this idea of the body being constructed of two vertical hubs that say something about how they might have considered the idea of humans their existence, their life and perhaps their also relationship to the earth and clay. The significance of clay as a material as well as some of the other materials which also relates to the human body that had been extended and enhanced by the use of pigments that we find in these figures. So, for example, the figure that we have in the left side of the screen and that is also from the Harappan sites. In this one we find that I mean there is this uh, the use of the bone black pigment that is used here and the bone black pigment is something that we find there to be uh, you know different from the lamp black. So, lamp black is something that is collected from the shoot and which is more uh, easily available at the same time that is used extensively in, in making paintings as well as for, uh, for making clay slips and so on for pottery as well as for like murals and all this different kind of purposes. But here we find that uh, with the chemical analysis it had been found that the color black that had been found in the figures of uh, many of these votive figures that we have uh, from the Harappan sites, they do not really have content from the lamp black, but they actually have the this bone pigment. So, it is a burnt bone pigment. So, usually the, the bones of the, of the animals or perhaps of the human beings as well and uh, from the dead ones, they are collected, they are burnt and from that uh, ashes, we know that I mean this, this black pigment is created and then that black pigment is uh, added to this to this terracotta figurines. So, by this we also know what happens is that uh, there is a there is this intrinsic relationship to the human body that is created by the use of this kind of material. In one hand there is a uh, there, there, there is a prominence of the use of clay and on the other hand we also have uh, this, this pigment which relates to the human or the animal body. So, through the material we find that I mean their belief system or their world view had how they all were connected to the, to the land, to the bodies and uh, all these different aspects of life. And there are some of the other figurines we have in the right side of the uh, of the screen in which there is an assortment and we find that either there are some of the figurines which are uh, you know which, which are adorned with uh, pigment and there are also some of the figurines which are not adorned and many different kinds of forms those are added to this uh, or uh, to this to this figurines and in them we always find that there is a prominence of different different kind of ornaments like necklaces and so on and then those fan like headdresses which are also something we find to be very specific in the Harappan sites. The other important part of the Harappan um, sites that the or the Indus Valley sites we find is the, um, the, the rituals of burials because after uh, the death. Uh, it, it, it was not cremated the way we see uh, in the majoritarian practice India today, but the bodies were buried and uh, what we see there, there are fairly simple rectangular burial places where there had been those burials and uh, in these burial sites we also have some of the figures, I mean some of the skeletons, those are excavated with burial pottery. So, pottery is something that is used during the lifetime of the people, during the rituals, at the same time they are also used in the burials. So, they have their, uh, they, they have their significance in the material world as well as in the afterlife. In the image that we find here and this one we have it comes from the second millennium BC in which there is a burial of a woman and there is also a burial of a child. So, both the skeletons are there in this same rectangular burial site and then by the side we also have different kind of burial pottery and in this pottery we have some of the things for example, 
um, you know there are those urns there are also some of the other uh, pottery w w which which are there perhaps for keeping food grains and of different kind of offerings which will which they have believed that the dead people will be uh, using them in their afterlife so this is a kind of like this burial practice that we find that was there very much prominent in most of this indus valley sites this burial practice also connects us to the some of the other places in the indian subcontinent as we have already discussed that this uh, the indus valley site is one of the earliest sites in from where the material evidences of the human uh, practices those are found from the indian subcontinent however it is also for us to remember that indus valley sites were not only the site where this kind of activities were taking place so some of the examples we find are from southern india and from eastern india where we have some of those burial sites and uh, there is no better uh, evidence than the than the megaliths of southern india mostly from tamil nadu part of karnataka and part of southern andhra pradesh where we have some of those uh, burial structures like the dolmen that we have in the left side of the screen or um, you know a sarcophagus like structure like where there is a um, terracotta uh, sarcophagus and in which like the dead body was buried and we can also see in this sites that i mean how the burial sites are protected by 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 the use of the stones and um, there are also evidence of burial urns and the different kind of pottery similar to what we have also seen in the harappan sites and this is something for us so the the evidences we have here they are mostly from sirutavur in the chengalapattu district in tamil nadu and also from kilari and so on which are further south in tamil nadu so this is this is something for us to think that how the this practices they have been uh, simultaneous even though some of the burial sites those are excavated in southern india they come from slightly later times for example 700 to 800 bc and so on which is slightly later than the harappan time but it is we can we can see that i mean how it is not really a disconnected practice and perhaps during the harappan time there had also been similar kind of practices in the other parts of the indian subcontinent so getting more about the pottery that we have here so there are two kinds of pottery at least two kind of pottery we find that some of the pottery which are used during the material life the ones we have on screen and some of the pottery we have those are used for very specifically for the burial purposes so for the ones that we have on screen they are perhaps been used on a daily basis but the thing is that i mean since the way we, they have been made we can also think about the economy also their social value that they are not just made for uh, keeping grains or keeping water and things like that but they are also very carefully decorated so when there are this amount of uh, this amount of details and care that is added to this pottery that also perhaps indicates something about their social status that there are unadorned pottery which do not really have any detail or any kind of ornamentation on them which suggest that uh, they are perhaps been used by day to day uh, life and by by the regular people and uh, when there are the potteries which are which are adorned which are also something that we find to be uh, much more uh, carefully done we can assume that i mean they had some more social significance economic significance and cultural significance as well now the other thing that we also find in this pottery is that there is a clear sense of symmetry and balance which are perhaps been made from the potter's will and that is the reason the kind of uh, the balance symmetry and uh, the precision that comes in this pottery those those are those are made possible by by the use of the potter's will in terms of the decoration we find that the kind of different kind of this geometric and repetitive motifs which are used in this pottery for example the one we have in the left side of the screen which looks like a mug 
or uh, a vessel for drinking perhaps and in this one we have there are these horizontal parallel lines which make the borders and between them there are those zigzag patterns and this these patterns which are all these patterns are made from different uh, brush strokes so there are uh, the thick and the thin brush strokes that those are used here that also perhaps indicate that different kind of brushes were already been available at this time in the Indus Valley sites. The right one, the right one we have on screen that is perhaps much more complicated and in this one uh, it, it is perhaps been made for storing water or other liquid and it has a, this bulbous body with a narrow uh, neck and that, and that one is um, profusely decorated. In this one we have bands of the borders and in the bands of the borders we already have some of these geometric motifs which are repeated. And in the central panel we have there is this extended body of a zebu bull which has also been celebrated in, uh, in the number of artifacts in the Indus Valley site. And in this bull we have its, its again its basic characteristic features for example the hump, the, the horns and then of course like I mean you know its leg and uh, you know its entire body all those have the characteristic of the zebu bull so that I mean it is identified and in the bottom we also find there is a depiction of a snake which is perhaps trying to suck out milk from this, this uh, from the bull. So we do not know the significance of this kind of images however these images stand here as uh, for us to uh, for us to comprehend or to perceive that I mean what all they have thought about and how they have have also constructed different kind of narratives which were made part of this utilitarian objects. And this is an example of the burial pottery that we have and in the burial pottery that what we have here is this uh, different kind of this pottery for offering. So we have urn and then we also have the different degrees of this pottery for the smaller ones which perhaps contain something in smaller quantity and then also there are like the plates with, with a raised uh, uh, pedestal which perhaps I mean had something as uh, you know which can be kept in the open. So there are different degrees of those pottery and the shape, their form and, uh, the, uh, and you know their capacity to hold some something within them that suggests that I mean what all different kind of purposes they might have served in these burial chambers or in the in these burial sites. From there we also find that there are some of the animal representations and uh, some of the animal representation also tells us about some of the uh, peculiarities of this Indus Valley sites. So for example there are some of these intriguing rhinoceros figures from Harappa and from some of the other regions uh, from the uh, some of the other sites in this valley um, area and in this once we when we see the rhinoceros figures we today we do not really have any of the rhinoceros uh, existing in this site however in those times it seems that there had been rhinoceros as researchers have found. And so in this rhinoceros we also see that how the legs which are which are much more sort of um, simplified as we have also seen in that first horse figurine. So that kind of like I mean simplified legs and uh, very simple body forms those are those are used here. However, they have also very cleverly and uh, you know efficiently they have uh, implemented some of the bodily features of the rhinoceros and uh, that gives its uh, you know the, the individualistic character of this rhinoceros here right. So and of course that I mean we also see there are those hides which are made on the top of the uh, on the on the back of this rhinoceros and the hides are perhaps been created in the right image that we have on screen. The hides are perhaps been created from uh, additional clay strips which are added to this rhinoceros figures and with punching holes. So different kind of materials were perhaps also been used for uh, making this uh, terracotta figurines and the tools perhaps like metallic tools and so on those are also implemented to be uh, made part of this um, you know the making these objects. 
Then from this discussion we also uh, look into some of the, uh, the terracotta seals and so on. So there have been terracotta seals, there are also the, some of the seals we also find they are made from soapstone and so on. And in this ones we find that the seals they uh, tell us about the trade relations in this sites because seals are something those are integral part of the trade systems and the Indus Valley sites for their uh, proximity to the river Indus and as well as the Arabian Sea that we have uh, you know in the where the Indus river meets the ocean. So, the, for this reasons what we have there was a prominence of the trade relations and the trade activities and they had trade relation with different sites of the um, for example, with Mesopotamia, with uh, Egypt and so on and the kind of materials that we have uh, found from the Indus Valley sites as well as from Mesopotamia and from Egypt and so on, it had been believed that uh, there were more export than of import and uh, some of the most important things which were exported from the Indus Valley sites were um, you know for, for example, the terracotta objects and then also uh, the beads different kind of perhaps uh, you know textiles, textiles being very much part of um, this trade network and very early from the second or third millennium BC. So, all these things those were uh, made as part of this trade network from very early on. And seals were very much part of this system as well because seal gives the authenticity of particular sites or a city or a workshop and that is how the seals are used. And in this seals what we find that there are some of the images which are implemented and we again have this very celebrated Zebu bull which is uh, you know depicted in this uh, seal which is there in the left side of the screen. And in this seal what we have have it is a it is a terracotta seal and in this seal what we see that I mean the uh, there was perhaps a terracotta slab and then on the top of the slab I mean the image was almost either uh, you know uh, made with a mold and so that is the reason the image area is raised from the terracotta slab or, or um, you know and uh, which is or it can also be made by like I mean you know removing the ma matrix of the terracotta and that is how like I mean the image area is raised and the rest of the area is sunken. So, this is how the, the, the terracotta seal had been made and then all the characteristic features here we find is pretty impressive that uh, the bull this Zebu bull which had been had been one of the celebrated figures in the Harappan context. We find that I mean this Zebu bull has been uh, made here with all the possible details. So, for example, we have um, you know this the horns this really elongated horns that we have have here and then like I mean the neck with all these wavy lines and then like I mean it is hump then all the bodily features for example, the back and then like the legs and everything else all of them are done with great detail. So, this also says something that there might have been a degree of uh, craftsmanship that we do not really have that I mean if this kind of skill is uh, available to the people then one can also wonder that I mean why all the figures are not made with similar kind of precision. So, that might also indicate that there had been degrees of craftsmanship. So, some of the ones which are much more uh, important they were done with much more care and precision whereas, the other ones which needed to serve the purpose, but I mean the precision was not really the priority there we do not really have that kind of details available there right. So, these are these are the different kind of aspects that we can also read from these images and in this seals we also find that in the uh, in this seals we also find that what happens is that there are area uh, mostly in the upper part of the seal reserved for um, text. So, for that reason there are some of the text or different kind of signs that we find in some of the ones we also do not really find the signs, but um, you know usually in the upper half we have some 
text or like some script that is that is made part of this seal which might have indicated a particular city or a workshop or a group of people who are part of this trade exchanges. So, in the right side image we find another image of the bull and this image is actually sort of the image area is sunken in this block whereas I mean the one that we have seen in the left side the image area is raised. So, these are some of the differences we find and perhaps that also says that I mean how different kind of uh, modeling or sculpting methods were used for making this kind of figures. And in the image in the right side, we also have uh, some script that is that is made as part of this seal and again in the upper half of it, which, which shows that I mean they in the all these Indus Valley sites, they might have followed a similar kind of uh, convention of having the script on the upper half of the image and having the, um, the visuals in the lower half of the seal, right. And then the back side of this particular seal that we have on screen in the uh, in the in the um, you know in the right side that also has a holder like thing in its back. So, some people have also assumed that it might have been worked as an amulet through which uh, a thread can be passed and it can be um, it can be used as an amulet in the body of someone or it can also be made as uh, it can also be a small holder for people to hold it in their hand and just like stamp it on wherever they want to put the seal on. Right. So, this, this there can be like this different kind of purposes, but this small um, traces on this materials on this objects, they sort of make us wonder about their um, this very uh, organized as well as complex material uh, culture during these times. Talking about seals, there are also some of the other uh, references that we find and that will be on, um, on, the, on the bodies and how the, the human bodies are also represented in some of those seals. So, we will uh, continue more on this seal in the next section of this lecture. Thank you.